All right, the question for the day. How do you stay motivated when you're going through some sort of training, the OSCP training, the Security Plus training, or uh, really any other cybersecurity training? How do you stay motivated? How do you avoid burnout? And the easy way to say this is stop doing the same repetitive thing over and over. If you're going through a course, stop going through the course for a day, take a break. But we can also fill, fill in that day with something else, some other way to learn, some other way to uh, cause stimulation in the area of cybersecurity. So for the OSCP, maybe just stop doing boxes for a day or two and fill that time with something else. So a few things to fill that time with. Uh, number one is reading through uh, the Hacker One activity. This is probably my favorite because you can learn a lot just by reading through these disclosed vulnerabilities. You can come through here, uh, open these up, I have learned quite a, quite a bit. I still am learning from these activities. I'll be like, man, I never would have thought that was a really a great way to pull off this exploit. And so these, I'll, I have an iPad. I'll just open up the iPad and I will just scroll through these vulnerabilities on the activity. And sometimes uh, I can lose track of time just reading through these because they can become really interesting. So reading through the activity even if you don't understand it i would suggest reading through it anyway and maybe doing some googling to try and help fill in the knowledge gaps because you're probably going to come across some of these uh, languages you'll come across something similar where you're sending a request and you're getting a similar response and maybe you can pull off a similar exploit so the hacker one activity is number one number two is just open up burp and turn on the proxy and then if you want to go browse facebook or youtube or literally anything else just read the requests that are being sent and received i wouldn't say uh, actually try and manipulate the requests unless they have a bug bounty program but you can read the request, you can see what headers they have, if there's anything that you're not understanding or you haven't seen before, and then just go Google that. And as you get done going through the request, then you browse the page. Normally it's kind of like a rewards incentive. You read the request, then you browse however it is that you're wanting to browse. And so this is one that I like to do, uh, mostly because I'm a curious person and I wanna know how things are working on the back end. So I like to open up Burp and when I'm browsing the internet and look at uh, headers and responses and see just exactly what's going on. Uh, number three is to open up a tool that you like to use and just look through the, the code and just see exactly how it works. This one, Fuff, uh, it has, it doesn't have an extension flag. And so there's one of the things that I don't like about this tool. And so maybe I would just come in and I would open up this tool and add in an extra flag so that I can add extensions in this fuzzing tool. So that's another one. It's not going to be the same as like just taking a day off because it's going to require some thinking and some problem solving, but it is something that I like to do. And then Four is to listen to a podcast. Whenever I'm mowing or I'm uh, doing something that just doesn't require a lot of thought, I like to listen to podcasts. And so you can just type in Hacker Podcast. Darknet Diaries is one of my favorite. Sometimes I'll listen to the Hacker One short interviews. Just uh, to keep motivated, you can hear about the cool things that other people are doing. You can actually go on Twitter and read about the other cool exploits that people are pulling off. And it'll just be like, man, I really want to go try that. And uh, so listening to podcasts, Twitter is another one that's a freebie that I wasn't thinking about and seeing what other people are pulling off. And then the last one should be pretty straightforward. It just is I need a break and take one. So if you really need a break, this is a hard one, especially if you're going through some paid program like the OSCP or you're doing the Security Plus or the Pentest Plus or really anything that has a time limit on it and you have to get through the course material in a certain amount of time we don't really want to take a take a day off or a break but it is it is helpful you'll become less frustrated less quickly if you're not finding an exploit on let's say a box that you're trying to do and so just take a day off and one of the things i have found is if i take a weekend off without looking at anything or doing anything by the time monday rolls around i will have felt like i wasted all that time and I am motivated to get back in to studying or to trying to learn things or just figure something new out. And so taking a day off or two days off is one that should motivate you when you come back 
to actually be more productive than kind of him haul around and maybe do something and then go be like, man, I don't really want to do this and then browse Facebook or uh, some other social media and just waste time. So sometimes taking a break for a day or two can actually just motivate you to go out the next time you come back and work twice as hard. So these are my five tips on how to avoid burnout.